Hey guys. Welcome back to our channel. It's Alexis and Louis. And we are coming to you today from the region of Piemonte or Piedmont in English. <laughs> we are in the beautiful vineyards in Barolo known for the namesake amazing wine. So we're going to show you where to get wine, grappa, the best places to taste it, do some tastings, buy some wine, and then also have some amazing meals. So let's go check out these vineyards. Sounds like a lot of fun. Let's go. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Like we said, we are going to do an ultimate wine tasting tour in Barolo. But before we get into that, thank you guys so much for coming back to our channel. If you want to support us, please subscribe and like it. Maybe share the video with a friend. It definitely helps us to grow. Okay, so after that, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is, of course, a wine tasting tour. This is in the wine center in Barolo. It was so well laid out. I've never seen anything like this. You can learn all about different wines. They have these little phones that you can pick up and listen to the wine that you're thinking about maybe tasting. Once you've decided the wine that you want to taste, you enter a little card in the slot and then you select the size of your pour and that's it. You can make your own experience and own tasting in this center. It's really, really cool and just an awesome way to try some different wines. And if you like it, you can buy the bottle. This is? Barolo di which they said is the king of Barolos. So if I asked you where Barolo came from, what would you say? Probably Barolo, right? And you'd be correct. But did you know that there's actually 11 different communes that are able to produce Barolo wine? There's the five most popular that produce most of it, but there are 11 different villages within this valley, all of which have their own character or take on Barolo. So that's our next recommendation on this itinerary is just Make your own afternoon and explore these gorgeous different villages. Some of our favorites were La Mora, which is actually the highest in altitude, so you get a beautiful view of all the vineyards. We actually found this stunning cathedral in a small little village, which I just love about Italy, that you have these amazing, beautiful churches, even in the, the smallest of places. So I'm not gonna give you a full itinerary, just check out some different villages. We'll list them on the screen. You have Barolo, La Mora, Serralunga, Novello. Just go through and explore and then maybe you'll find your favorite village and that will be your favorite wine because you'll have the memory to go with it. So just explore, enjoy these beautiful villages until we head to our next destination. Now, of course, no visit to Barolo is complete without visiting a local winemaker and tasting some wines. We went to the Borgogno cellar and we absolutely loved the experience. It was just such a beautiful place with an amazing view, but more than that, the wine was incredible. So as part of the experience here, the wine tasting is 15 euros, but that is free if you buy 50 euros worth of wine, which is what we did. So my husband and I both tried six different wines, so three Barolos and three different wines that the vineyards produce. We actually learned something really interesting. The Nebbiolo grape is what is used to make Barolo, but only at certain altitudes and only facing certain directions. So if the vineyard is sitting a little bit too low or if it's not facing perfectly south, it doesn't make Barolo wine, but it is the same grape. So we tried some of those different wines that were made with the same grape that typically produces Barolo and we can learn and taste the difference. So this is why I always recommend checking out local makers because you can really understand the work that goes into these products and the little nuances behind it. So when you take a bottle home and open it for that special occasion, you'll have some more context around it. You can have a beautiful view. You can have a view of Barolo, you can have a view of La Mora, you can have a view actually of the whole region. Yeah. 
So we really recommend that you explore the local vineyards, but we recommend that you do this after you've done a wine tasting. And the reason why is once we explored the vineyards after having the experience with the winemaker, we really understood what we were looking at. They talked about the clay on the ground, the altitude and the directions that the vineyards need to face. And you can walk through and really just understand all of that and see the work and passion that goes into making some of these renowned wines. I'll also plug Piedmont here. I know that Tuscany is typically the place that gets most of the tourism for vineyards in Italy, but Piedmont had some absolutely stunning views. Louis and I just strolled through these vineyards for what felt like hours, taking photos, enjoying it. I think if you want, you could probably bring a picnic and just enjoy it here. And if that's not enough, these beautiful vineyards and vines aren't enough. If you are a fan of chestnuts, there are so many beautiful chestnut trees here. We actually could smell it as we were just driving by, and there's a lot of local producers that sell them as well. So if you're interested in chestnuts, you can also get that in Barolo, but we'll leave you guys here. We hope that we've inspired you to maybe think about Barolo for your next trip to Italy. We absolutely loved it. All right, that's it for us. Thank you very much for watching. We're gonna get one last glass of wine or maybe two and see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.